Welcome back! Today we are going to create an ink and watercolor illustration using a cool feature called Reference. It allows us to keep our line work and colors on separate layers, so we will be able to recolor and adjust both independently. Ok, let's get started! I am going to use one of my favorite brushes for inking, the Multipurpose Moisty Tailor. It has a little bit of water and its size varies with pressure a little bit. You'll find a link to my paid ink collection in the video description, but of course you can pick a brush from the default inking set. Roses are gorgeous, but they can be a bit complicated to draw because they have many petals, so let's draw a simplified version. The trick is to imagine that a rose is made of simple geometrical shapes. The petals are close together in the center, so we'll simplify that part into a triangle. And then, as it opens up, we will imagine a square and a pentagon. With that in mind, draw a continuous line, stop anywhere you want, and then draw a few more petals. Easy peasy, right? We will draw leaves using two curved lines. If this is too easy for you, you can draw serrated leaves instead. If you decide to do that, don't forget to draw the teeth pointing towards the apex of the leaf, ok? Let's draw the cone and two more leaves, one here and another one here. We are going to play around with our line work later. We will be able to create more different versions of our rose on a cone illustration if we draw the details on a separate layer. So that's what we are going to do. Start drawing the main vein of the leaves. And then continue with the rest. Let me turn on the super quick mode so you don't get bored. Feel free to experiment. Neither the leaves nor the veins have to look the same way. I am just trying to keep this simple and entertaining. You don't want to watch me draw the endless possibilities, do you? Let's add some details to the ice cream cone. Start with a shake line. Then make a few parallel lines this way. Some perpendicular lines. And do the same here, but changing the direction. These lines don't need to look perfect, but if you want them to look perfect, you can either practice a lot or you can use a quick line tool. Just wait at the end of each stroke and it will snap into a perfect straight line. It's time to add watercolors! Create a new layer and name it Rose. Then tap twice on the Ink 1 layer and turn on Reference. This feature allows us to use the Color Drop tool for coloring our line work on a different layer. The rose layer is empty, let's fill it with color. We can use any color we want, but in general I recommend using white. Why? Well, because watercolors are quite transparent, and you'll see the color through. Let's change the background color to be able to see what we are going to do. I don't want to create more ghost flowers. Once was enough. <laughs> We just need to drag the color from the color button and release it over the area we want to fill in. If while doing that we feel an undesired area, don't lift your finger. Move it to the left to decrease the color drop threshold and lift your finger once the problem is solved. 
If you set the threshold to zero and the undesired area is filled, undo, go to your ink layer and look for gaps. We can only fill an area if it is a closed area, okay? Create a clipping mask. Choose a color and a brush. Since we are going to paint petals on leaves, I am going to use uh, the ones included in the leaf set. I'll choose the glazed leaves brush. The size of this brush varies with pressure, while the amount of paint remains the same throughout the stroke. To darken an area, we have to apply more layers of paint on top of each other, just as we do with traditional watercolors. This brush mimics wet and dry and a low radio of paint to water, so we'll use it to easily create light washes and visible soft edges. If you want a seamless transition, you can use a smudge tool. You can use, for example, the bloomer brush. What's the problem? Well, when we paint using a brush that has a paper texture or other texture incorporated, you can see the texture here, right? And then we use the smudge tool, we will lose that texture. That's why it's so important to choose the right brush for the watercolor effect we want to recreate. Let's do the same but using a different brush. For example, the water use of edges. In this case, it's the opacity that varies according to the pressure we apply. It also mimics a low radio of paint to water, but a wet on wet effect which means that we will get softer edges and smoother transitions. To darken some areas, we can choose a darker color or we can create a new clipping mask and set the blend mode to linear burn. Each time we create a new clipping mask, set the blend mode to linear burn and then paint. It will look as if we would have increased the paint to water radio. Remember that we are the ones who control how smooth the transition is by applying more or less pressure. Also, since this brush has a very subtle texture, we can use the smudge tool without losing quality. How do we get a paper texture then, as we usually do, using a paper texture brush? Create a new clipping mask, pick a dark color, a texture brush, and there it is. I prefer the other style for this illustration, so I will turn off the visibility of all these layers. We can keep the paper layer to get a more realistic look if you want. Let's paint some of the leaves now. Create a new layer and move it underneath the rose, just to have all the painted layers below the ink layers. Select white again or any color you want and fill with it the leaves. A little trick. If we have all the leaves on the same layer, it will be more difficult to paint them independently, especially if we need to use large brushes. 
So what we are going to do is to fill in every other one. And then create another layer to fill in the rest. Create a clipping mask. Choose green. Go to the leaves set and let's choose the watery leaves brush this time. This brush is very sensitive to pressure and the angle of the apple pencil. It is quite versatile because it allows us to create from very light washes to blooms, just tilting the pencil and varying the pressure applied. Create a new clipping mask and change its blend node to linear burn. There are many different types of rose brushes, so feel free to add red, purple, yellow or any other color to the leaves. And of course to the rose. Also, you can use blue to darken the areas in shadow. I forgot to rename the paper layer, so let's rename it duplicate it and move it here. In fact, let's duplicate it again to make it more intense. Yeah, now it's better. Go to the other leaves layer and create a new clipping mask. Choose light green and pick a different brush. The moisty, for example. This brush is also very versatile. It has a nice texture, its size varies with pressure. If we apply hard pressure, we lift paint. The edges will also look different depending on the pressure applied. And we will be able to go from a light wash to an intense color by simply overlapping layers of paint. All of this will allow us to get a pretty realistic result. Let's paint some shadows. I have the brush size set to the maximum. That makes it more difficult to control the pressure applied, but make it easy to get many different watercolor effects without being constantly changing the size in the sidebar. If you find it hard to control pressure, Decrease it until you feel comfortable, okay? I think these two leaves should be darker, right? When something looks flat, in general, it's because some more shadows are needed. Okay, let's create a new layer and follow the same steps for painting the cone. Now that we already have all the areas filled, we can change the background color again. Let's choose this color instead of white. Create a clipping mask. Pick the base color for your cone. And let's use a painterly brush this time. With this brush, we can easily create a light wash with a hard edge, as if we added more water and color to an area before it is completely dry. So more pigment is carried to the outer edges. To darken an area, we will apply another layer of paint. With this brush, we will always get a wet on dry effect. To soften this, we will apply more layers of paint with a different brush. The moisty, for example. This is too dark. Let's try with this one. Yeah, this looks better. And for the shadows, let's try with this one.
Let's pick the painted brush again and paint the shadow cast by the seam. And add some touches of this color here and there. Let's do the same with yellow to add more color variation. I think these colors look too saturated, right? Do you remember how to fix this? Using the Hue Saturation Brightness tool that we learned in the seventh tutorial. Let's decrease the saturation. Much better, right? The problem I see now is that it looks a bit flat, so let me darken the shadow areas. Duplicate the paper layers if you want the paper texture to be more visible. Our first illustration is done! At this point, we can turn off the visibility of the background layer and export it as a PNG. This could be a cool sticker, right? If you like the idea, check out my 2 minutes tutorial on how to create stickers in Procreate. Now let's see how many different finishes we can get by simply varying the appearance of the ink layers. Second combination. Let's duplicate the ink layer and invert its color so it turns white. Third combination. Let's turn off the visibility of the inner lines. Fourth combination. Transparent lines. Fifth. Only inner lines in black. Sixth. White inner lines. Seventh. White inner lines and black outer lines. Eighth. Only the black lines. As you see, I've duplicated the layers a few times to not lose any of the combinations. If you have duplicated them too, you can use the Alpha Lock tool to paint the lines in different colors. If you didn't, just create a clipping mask to be able to turn on and off the changes. I'll use Alpha Lock. Invert the layer to turn it white. Pick any color you want and let's use the Bloomer brush to create a colorful line. I like to use the Bloomer brush because with that, it's easy to control the amount of paint by varying the pressure applied and overlapping more or fewer layers of paint. I'm doing this this way because I want the colors of the lines to look different than the rest of the illustration. I want to see the lines. If you want to get rid of the lines and the gaps left by them, you can do it as we learned in the second tutorial of this series.
If you want to make the colored line more intense, you can duplicate the layer a few times and then merge them. If this is not enough, remember that you can also use blend modes. This would be my ninth option. We can also turn on the visibility of the inner lines again and even play around with its opacity. As you see, there are multiple combinations and choosing always one of them can help you make your style more unique. This is my favorite, so I will finish the tutorial here. Let me know which one is yours. See you in the next tutorial. Bye!